Hey movers, welcome to our first flight of the warrior practice. Let's take a moment to bow in, right, so gently closing your eyes, drawing hands to chest, thumbs between the eyebrows. Right, take a moment to acknowledge the qualities of the yogi within, right, the capacity to surrender and accept that which is. Right, lowering the hands, open your eyes, placing the hands forward, forming a triangle, right, bowing your forehead into the space, and right, we say us, acknowledging the qualities of the warrior, right, the who stands up and fights for what they can change and do not accept. Let's rise. Establish yourself in a down dog position. <clears throat> now for this class, I expect you to be warmed and primed, right? So we can just jump right in to the juicy material. So establishing your down dog position, rooting through the heels, chest, melts towards the toes. Maintain an external wrap and press through the shoulder girdle, pressing in to the thumb and index as you externally rotate through the arms. All right, this is the foundation of your handstand strength. Right, it all begins here in our down dog. We're moving through uh, a version of section one from Bukum Primary Series, just spiced up a little. So. Pay close attention, there are going to be differences and nuance. Mount your down dog, right? Ankles drive forward. Everything maintains throughout your, your down dog architecture, right? So feel that again, roots through the heels. Chest maintains melting towards the toes and drive the ankles forward. Now, posterior tilts, gaze towards the navel as you round and roll, press and protract. Right, move through a plank with shoulders over wrists. Now find your leaning cobra, right, which is essentially a leaning plank. Right? Cobra hood is engaged. Palms are pressed and fingers are active. All right, so big cobra hood, shoulders over fingertips. Now, this is where we're going in a different direction. Begin to hover the knees. As you glide back, hover the elbows. Right, it's known as a horizontal squat. <clears throat> now notice you can be high, as in the knees are roughly about a foot. Look for depth, so hover the knees as you open to the shoulders. All right, lower the knees. As you externally rotate through the arms, lower the elbows, gaze forward. Right, this is called a rocking dolphin. So as you rock forward, maintain this 90 degree architecture in the arms to find your chaturanga. Right, cinch in through the core, posterior tilt to the pelvis. Yeah, rocking back. Right, so this is this <coughs> kind of child's pose variation. The forms are based. Rock forward, maintain that 90 degree architecture, chaturanga. Really, what I'm looking for is elbows over wrists. Glide forward, glide forward, wiggles far forward as you can go. Rock back. Good, last one. Rock forward from our child's pose into our chaturanga, right? a kneeling version. Now, I'm gonna challenge your strength here. Hover the chest. Good, press up halfway to a true chaturanga. Now, press up three quarters of the way. Descend halfway, true chaturanga. Good, and press up all the way into a kneeling plank variation. Press and protract. This is straight arm scapular strength, right? This is where we're developing our fu fundamental understanding of recruitment for our handstands. All right, so posterior tilt in the pelvis, core strong. Find your lean here. As we find our lean, slowly externally rotate and bend through the arms a quarter of the way down. 
So we're in a three-quarter position, press up to our plank, our kneeling plank. Externally rotate as you bend, halfway down, right, into our true chaturanga. Perhaps glide a little further forward. Good, press up. All right, we're making our way down. Smooth, easy does it, all the way down to hover and rock back onto the forearms. Gaze back towards the toes, hover the knees. <clears throat> now, a little nuance here. As we extend the legs, right, I want you to rock into your plank and extend the arms. Perhaps finding a spinal wave here. Right, so, as you extend, press and protract. Let's feel that again. So from a horizontal squat, as you extend through the legs, you round and roll to find this leaning cobra hood plank. That's what I call it, right? Or leaning cobra for short. Good, draw the chin to chest. Draw the feet towards the hands to elevate the hips. High in the balls of the feet and glide back. First, establishing your mounted down dog Chest melts towards the toes, and then root through the heels. Beautiful work, certainly warming up the internal core. Okay, moving on. Mounted down dog, generous bend through the knees. Gaze forward. Extend through the legs, finding a leaning cobra. Now, I want you to slide the toes, all right? Skid them across whatever surface you're on, Slide and feel that pull power to step into a squat. That may have been a little bit messy, or as you curl up your yoga mat, whatever that looks like. All right, that's okay. Reset, reestablish. <clears throat> Driving the elbows towards the knees. Take a moment here in your squat position. Knees are rocking over the toes. We find this melting and opening in the hips. As you extend through the legs, fingertips are going to base gently in front of you. <clears throat> Swivel the toes forward if they're not already there. Extend through the legs. Now, I encourage you to wiggle from side to side through the hips, right, feeling sensations in through the back line. Start taking a bend through the knees. Right, the placement of the hands is roughly the distance of your forearms. Now, find the nook. This is what I call the nook, where you connect the knees right behind the elbows. So you're on the inside of the patella, and you'll find there's like a little space station. I call it, you know, like just how a space station docks. Right, I call it the nook. Right, so. You need to be bent through the arms to find it. If you're straight, you're not going to have a nook. So externally rotate, bend, and find your connection. Now, once you find your connection, it should feel pretty sturdy. All right? Now, the lean, right? All the arm balances uh, require this lean. This is how the legs become light. So find your lean, find your lean, draw the elbows towards each other, find integrity. <coughs> Press and protract, cinching through the core, spider grips. Perhaps one heel to toe is available, and the second heel to sit bone. And you're flying in your bent arm crane. Take a smooth, easy breath. All right, this can look like a supported bent arm crane, or even just this leaning bent arm crane with both toes down. Whatever's available in your practice. But in order for things to float, you got to lean, right? The leaning is how you fly, not any kicking up, all right? Rebase the toes, extend through the legs, a moment here and an active forward fold. So place the entire palms on the mat, bend as much as you need to in the legs to establish that connection. Allow the head and neck to relax and feel traction through the spine. Begin to press through the palms, gaze behind you, and begin to extend through the legs, right? Whatever you got, 
Rock onto the heels. Rock onto the hands. Rock onto the heels. Rock onto the hands. Right, find this active forward fold here. It's okay, you, your legs might be generously bent. It's okay, whatever you got, looking for that length in the back line. Now, extend to the back line into this little fingertip position here, where perhaps you've got just four little fingertips on the mat. Flex to the toes, lengthening further through the back line. A little bit of balance here. Perhaps you can even play with floating the fingertips. Oh yeah, good. Begin swiveling the toes towards each other, and base. All right, so we're in this uh, duck position. Find your forward fold here. I know it's awkward and weird, but that's where the magic is, right? The places that we don't often visit in our bodies. Rebase the hands, swivel the heels towards each other, rock back. Now we're in this p pigeon position, right? Feel what your forward fold is like in this position. Allow the upper trunk, the neck to be heavy. Right? Inviting any subtle wiggles to settle in and feel the dark corners of that which we do not explore. All right, nice final little swivel. Big toes connect, heels are connected. Spinal undulations. All right, generous bend the knees. Cinch into the core, the upper, the up, round the upper back, excuse me. Now begin bridging the hips forward, maintaining this curvature in the spine. As you begin rising, bridging the hips forward. Right, stack through the lumbar, the thoracic. As you elevate to staying position, anterior tilt to the pelvis, scapula squeeze back towards each other, chin gazes upwards. As you hinge, fold, and release everything towards the mat. Good, again, let's feel that undulation. Perhaps adjust the feet to so something that feels a bit more natural to you. For me, it's more of a hip width distance. Generous bend, cinch, rise and roll. Nice and slow, looking for the nuance and sensation. Perhaps places you haven't visited before. As you stack through the cervical spine, anterior tilt, open the space between ribs and hips. Gazing upwards, right? anterior tilt of the pelvis leads the way, scapula squeezing towards each other. Ribs and thighs connect and release it all to your forward fold. Palms press, a little active forward fold here but to reset. Lean to the hands, press the shoulders, extend through the legs. Maybe a little rock back and forth here. Good, generous bend in the knees. It's so rise to standing, rise and roll. Fist pump yourself at the base of your spine. Elbows drive back, right, proud through the sternum, posterior and tilts in, tilts in the pelvis to cinch in through the core. Right, perhaps a little squirming, a little bit of rotation to open up through the shoulders here. Another couple of sweet breaths. Are you squeezing, excuse me, squeezing the elbows back, right, while you depress and wrap. Now, interlace the hands at your coccyx. Right, begin hinging at the hips, finding a little interlaced forward fold. Now the key little nuance here is take a generous bend in the elbows. Avoid hyperextending and locking out the elbows like this. Maintain a bend in the elbows as you look for sending the fists overhead or right, forward. Right, constantly checking in with the bend in the elbows and driving the fists out of the socket. Good, taking a couple of sweet breaths here. All right, always allowing yourself to settle in and explore these little containers that we, we inhabit for a moment. 
releasing the arms, forward fold. Now the opportunity to fly here. So drape the hands forward, about a uh, forearm's distance. Find your nook and dock the shins. Or lean way forward, engage your spider grips, draw the elbows towards each other. All right, you may be here, this is version one. Perhaps you can draw one heel to sit bone. If you're feeling sturdy, both heels to sit bone. Right, this should feel stable for you to fly like this. This is the mother of all arm balances. All right. All right, establishing a sense of stability and comfort in here is really what we're looking for. Good, without rocking back, reach the toes back to base, nice and soft. All right, a little shuffle here. So we base the hands close towards the toes and shuffle back to just establish yourself on a good position in the mat. <clears throat> now, hands are gonna return right outside the feet. Now what I'm looking for here is gonna be stepping back into Chaturanga in an incredibly slow and precise way. Right now we're just kicking back and flopping onto our bellies, right? So what this is gonna require? Fingers are spread, spider grips, right? So slide the fingernails in towards the hands. Extend through the arms and externally rotate, right? Begin rocking forward into the balls of the feet so you're in this big protraction here. Now, externally rotate as you bend in the arm. Right, notice there is not much there, it gets really hard. Rock back into the balls of the feet. So as we bend and start lowering, we're gonna extend one leg back. This is gonna give us a little bit more room to start lowering into our chaturanga. But the key purpose of this is really sending as much weight as we can forward, right? Because that's where floating and flying really takes on that quality of levitation is the lean forward. It is absolutely essential. And people, I don't think, understand how to access it and understand the challenge it truly is. So, let's find it. Hands are spread. Ex extend through the arms, lean, right? So you're in a straight arm, essentially like a lalasana variation. Externally rotate. Now as you lean and bend, extend the left toes back. Continue to lower to a, a true chaturanga, right? 90 degrees in the arms, extend the right leg back. Holding in your true chaturanga. Good, press up three quarters of the way. All right, so between a chaturanga and a plank, lower uh, a quarter of the way down. So we're hovering off the mat. Good, press up true chaturanga, halfway. Press up three quarters. Good, press up, plank position. Should feel like a rest after all that hard uh, bent time of strength work. Alrighty, so here we are. Last time, glide forward. Head goes as far forward as you can. Externally rotate and bend through the elbows. All right, through those three checkpoints onto the belly. So it's the slowest, sweetest chaturanga you have. Knees drive forward, all right, cobra roll to up dog. <laughs> up dog to down dog. All right, so that's our section one reimagined to really uh, build this fundamental understanding of bent arm strength, straight arm strength. It's actually mostly bent arm strength, a little bit of straight arm strength. <coughs> so let's move through that sequence again. Ankle drives forward, mount your down dog. Posterior tilts, singe through the core, gaze at the navel as you round and roll. Leaning cobra. Leaning cobra, hover the knees. Again, gliding back, hovering the knees just above the mat. Arms are straight, horizontal squat. Perhaps kiss the forehead to the mat. Good. Lower the knees. Base the forearms, gaze forward. Rock forward as far as you can go. As far as you can go. 
rock back. All right, a couple more times here. Maintain the posterior tilt in the pelvis. So your core is cinched as you rock forward. Find your lean, 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 and rock back. All right, last time. Rock forward. Shoulder heads forward. Stack elbows over the wrists and glide back. Good, extend through the arms, hover the knees. A little spinal undulation to our leaning cobra. So as you extend in the arms, round and protract, and find your lean. Good, chin to chest. Big press and protraction. Toes towards the hands as you undulate into your down dog. Gaze forward, hover the knees. Extend the legs so you're in your leaning cobra. Now, pull the toes towards the hands and slide your way into a squat. All right, align the hands between the feet, making the adjustments as you need to arrive in this active squat position. Notice thighs are parallel. Connect elbows and knees, splaying the knees open. Taking a moment here in your active squat. Finger stand, connect the tip of the fingers to the mat, toes face forward. Extend through the legs, right, finding this forward fold variation. Rock onto the heels. On the tips of four fingers, flex the toes in towards you. Or right, perhaps you can drive the chest in towards the big toes. Good. Swivel the toes in towards each other. Rooting on the, the blade edge of the foot first. Press into this forward fold. Bend in the knees. Base the hands. This <coughs> a duck variation of our forward fold. Perhaps give a little wiggle through the hips. Rock forward into the balls of the feet. Swivel through the heels as much as you can. Find this external rotation. Rock back. Nothing swivels yet, so now you're in your pigeon forward fold variation. Bend the knees, base the hands, and extend through the legs. Good. Rock on the heels. Swivel the toes. So feet are Hip with distance, make whatever adjustments you need. Spinal undulations. All right, drive the knees forward. Cinch the core, chin to chest. Begin rising, really active. So bend the knees as far forward as you can. Posterior tilt, so you bridge hips forward. Arms and neck are heavy as you stack through the lumbar. Thoracic and cervical. Anterior tilt leads the way as you open up through the ribs, gaze forward, swan dive. Right, the arms can remain at the hips. Uh, draping the hands forward, find this active forward fold, so palms press, bend the knees, ribs and, and thighs are connected, gaze back, lean to the hands and extend through the legs. Right, find this little handstand press here, but within your forward fold. Good, bend through the knees. Spinal undulation. Rocking to the balls of the feet. Cinch the core, round and roll. Anterior tilt, gaze forward. Right, as you open the hips, squeezing the back line. So you open the front line, hinge. Round and roll, draping everything towards the mat. Yeah, last time. Bend, rise, parachuting the upper back. Stacking through the spine. Connecting and fist pumping yourself, the base of your spine. Depress the shoulder girdle and squeeze the elbows back. Good, interlace the hands. Base the thumbs at your coccyx. Now squeeze the elbows towards each other. Depress through the scapula. 
Notice if you're splaying open through the ribs, cinch and engage your core while you open through the shoulders. Good. Drive those fists down towards the mat without hyperextending the arms. Maintain that micro bend. Again, hinging at the hips, lowering into an interlaced forward fold. All right, remember that quality micro bend. The entire time you're sending the fingers overhead. Right, so do not sacrifice the hyperextension for more opening in the shoulders. You can get plenty of opening. Right, maintain that bend. Releasing, hands base, forearms distance, spider grips are engaged, external rotation, find your nook, lean, 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 heel to sit bone connection, perhaps on both sides, and here we fly. Right? So if whether you're just leaning here into your bent arm crane position, or you're flying with me, I want you to press and protract, cinch in the core. Now if you can, play with bending a little bit more, shoulder heads towards the mat, and then extending. Not extending too much where you're jamming on your, 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 your elbows. All right, so finding a little dynamic balance here. Good. Kiss the toes. A little shuffle back. Hands or base just as outside the feet. This is an incredibly mindful step back. Right, so straight arm strength, external press, spider grips. Lean, begin to bend through the arms. This time send the right foot back. Good, lean forward, bend, bend, bend. Left foot back. Halfway down, so we're in our true chaturanga. Glide the crown forward if you can. Press three quarters of the way up, right? Lower, true chaturanga. Lower a quarter of the way down, so we're floating. We're hovering the chest off the mat. Press up halfway. Press up three quarters. Good. And press and extend into your plank. Plank will now seem like a rest, right? Good. Chin draws in towards the chest. Lean, draw the toes towards the hands as you round and roll. Finding your mounted down dog, chest opens towards the toes and root through the heels. Good, last round of the section one reinterpretation. Here we go. Mount your down dog. Spinal wave to our leaning cobra. Leaning cobra, horizontal squat, hover the knees, rock back, extend through the arms. Kiss the forehead to the mat, hovering the knees. Lower the knees. Externally rotate the arms as you base the forearms. Rock and glide forward, as far forward as you can go in your true chaturanga. So you're not hovering off the mat. You're halfway up between plank and belly down. Rock back. All right, two more cycles of this. I really want you to feel what it takes to be in a true chaturanga architecture. So when you rock forward, I want you 90 degrees in the arms, elbows above the wrists. How far forward can you lean? Good, rock back. Take a breath. External rotate the forearms. Establish this external rotation. It's really important. Rock forward. Core is tight. Lean, lean, lean. And rock back. It's our child's pose with forearms based. Extend through the arms. External wrap and press. Hover the knees, horizontal squat. Horizontal squat to leaning cobra as we extend the legs, chin to chest, round and roll to your leaning cobra. Leaning cobra, chin to chest, 
round in a row. Mounts to down dog. To down dog. Beautiful, guys. Gaze forward. Hover the knees. Extend. Lean in cobra. Now, slide the toes forward. So, feel this pull strength. It's meant to feel awkward. All right? Slide the toes forward. Take your sweet time and step them outside of the hands. Good. Elbows and knees are connected. Take a moment here on your squat. Perhaps finding a lot of spinal rotation. Finding a neutral active squat. Finger stand as you extend through the legs. A slow, mindful, mindful heel toe walk. So rock back on the heels. Feel that length in the back line. Then begin swiveling the toes in towards each other. Sweet, beautiful active range of motion. Rock. Find your forward fold. Rock into the balls of the feet. Slow, mindful, external rotation. As much as you can find, connect the heels. Find your forward fold here. Now, rock back onto the heels. Flex the toes towards you. Begin swiveling, finding the feet in a neutral hip width distance. Nice forward fold. Take a moment here, perhaps a little ragdoll. Walking out, alternate legs. Good, releasing the arms. It's three spinal undulations. All right, it's a little self-practice here. A third undulation, pausing your forward fold, rising to standing. Inslace the hands at your sacrum. Right, find your squeeze of the scapula towards each other, opening to the sternum, cinch in the core. So posterior tilt. It's squeeze and open through the sternum. Now, drive the fist towards the bat without hyperextending. Hinge into your interlaced forward fold. Bend through the legs as much as you need to. Allow gravity to pull through the spine. All right, allow the arms to relax and engage. Right, so the engagement is fingers driving towards the ceiling or upwards and then release. Right, there's this pulsation between passive and active. Beautiful. Release the arms. Tracing the hands forward, setting up for your bent arm crane. Find your nook. Find your balance. Remember, spider grips are engaged, elbows towards each other. Perhaps you're just here finding your lean. Notice we're in a three quarter chaturanga in the arms. Remember that position I'll ask you to hold here, or oh, in kneeing position. Ooh, look where it's showing up, right here. Now, bent arm crane. So, I'm asking you to do it because it shows up in our uh, foundational arm balance, right here. So just looking for strength, stability, and a sense of focus and calm while you're here. All right, this is our foundation for everything we do. 
or certainly how I've built it. Good, rocking back into the toes. A little shuffle back to rebase. Lean to your straight arm scapular strength. Externally rotate, bend through the arms, so in this awkward chaturanga. Left leg extends back, right leg extends back. We're in our true chaturanga, right halfway down. Lower onto the mat. Beautiful, no, it's tough. Anterior tilt, right, let's find that cobra roll. Top dog. Chin draws the chest, big press and protraction. Slide the feet towards the hands as you undulate and untuck the toes, finding a down dog. Moving into our sequencing, uh, big toes connect. Demi point smears as you extend the right leg, slowly elevate to a three point down dog. Right, heel to sit bone, mount your three point, draw the knee in towards the chest without changing a thing. Round and roll. Drive the knee towards the tricep. Now, this is where it's going to get a little bit unique and special. Right, swivel the back foot so you're uh, rooting the blade edge, right, laterally. Now, find the nook, knee to elbow. Right, this is going to take a little bit of shuffling to find your correct position. Right, so you can have a four point base in this architecture, right, where we're looking for. That the little nook that we're finding in our bent arm crane. Okay, so version one is four points supporting that, right? Here. Now, version two, you can look for a three point base transition, whether it's lifting a heel or lifting a hand and playing with that. Perhaps it's lifting a heel and a hand. Right, the key component of this is driving that elbow back into the knee. And you may want to swivel a little bit the head a little bit laterally to find more of an established base. Remember, use whatever base points you need to support this transition. I know it's going to feel weird in the beginning, right? But we need to develop this kind of, it's a supported air baby. And it's a beautiful way to start accessing this intelligence, right? With floating with one side of the body. Now, press out of the nook, elevate the knee towards the ceiling and step on the outside of the mat, just like that. Square up the hips. Now, the right hand is gonna lift and circle forward. Rise up onto the fingertips of the left hand. Stack through the shoulders and find a revolved, extended side angle. Now, right hand, that's the overhead hand, is gonna draw and reach back. Hover the back knee, find your balance here, Posturing up to revolved lunge, right? Stacking through the spine. Swivel through the arms, so a water wheel transition, moving through uh, a, a crescent lunge variation. Back heel spins open, adjust the lead heel so you have the heel to arch alignment, arriving in our warrior two. Warrior two, pivot on the feet, staying low in the hips, horse stance. All right, double block. Here's our signature Budokan transitions showing up. Double block, hands draw to chest, pivot on the feet, establishing our warrior two, and leaning into our deep reaching warrior. Good, right hand bases. I like to tent them, press up and out, stack through the shoulders. Left hand reaches back, circles towards the ceiling, Right, use the tricep knee connection to twist through the spine. And then find your extended side angle, lengthening through the side body. Gaze towards the left fingertips, square up the hips. This little moment, rather than squaring up the hips, excuse me, we're rotating onto the blade edge. Right hand fully bases. Now, wiggle that foot to the position where you can find the nook. Maybe you need four points to base. Maybe you can experiment with three. And can you find this supported 
uh, air baby. Now we square up the hips, extend the right toes back, finding our leaning cobra. Slow, mindful descent, pausing your true chaturanga, and lowering onto the belly. Go cobra roll to up dog, anterior tilt, posterior tilt, guides the undulation. Right from up dog, chin to chest, press, rise, and roll, and tucking the toes, returning to our down dog. Beautiful work. So that little moment that the key arm balancey moments are that supine, uh, excuse me, the supported air baby. Big toes connect, smear the dummy point, finding full extension in that left leg, and slowly elevate. Heel towards the sit bone. Mount your three-point down dog. Draw the knee through the midline. As you glide forward, press and protract. Rotate on the blade edge. Right, it's almost like you're setting up for a Komodo crawl here. Now, base all four points as you need to, to bend the lead arm. Find your nook. Draw a heel to sit bone. All right, and looking for balance here. Perhaps the right hand can now base two. What, what movements do you have here? As we hold and develop the stability strength in a single arm architecture with whatever supports we need, of course. All right, if all this feels impossible, just uh, connect the knee towards the wrist and hold some sort of version of uh, a lunge. Good. Now, from the support air baby, hinge at the knee, knee towards the ceiling as you step on the outside of the hand. That's meant to be really tough on the lateral side body. Hands are going to switch base as you screw up the hips, right, stacking through the shoulders, finding your revolved extended side angle. And now I'm actually circles forward as we stack through the shoulders. Left elbow drives back, hover the back knee, posturing up, right, finding your balance, revolve lunge. Circling through, a crescent lunge variation. Back heel spins open, warrior two, pivot on the feet so you have heel arch alignment. Staying low as you can, pivoting on the feet, horse stance, double block, double block, deep reaching warrior. Left hand bases, gaze back, begin circling through, find the stacking of the shoulders as you twist through the spine. And then find length through the side body. Still gazing underneath the armpit there, reaching through the fingertips. Good. Squaring up the hips. Looking for our supported air baby here. So left hand remains the base hand. Rotate onto the, the blade edge of the right foot. Find your nook. Ensure that you're bent in the arm to find the nook. Right, left heel to sit bone if you're able to do that. Maybe those are connected. Heel to sit bone if you can. Right hand floats if you can. All right, noticing what type of integrity you have in this architecture. All right, a little swivel from side to side. All right, no point do you straighten that arm. All right, the bend is how we have the architecture to support the knee. Square up the hands, square up the hips. Left toes connect with the right, leaning cobra, press and protract, slow descent, halfway, all right, to our true chaturanga, rock a little more forward, and descend, all right, onto the belly, gaze forward, self-practice here, cobra roll to up dog, up dog to down dog. Beautiful work, guys. Let's move through that first sequencing that we learned, and then the sequencing we just moved through with the warrior stances. So, 
<clears throat> part of our rolling salutations. Elevate the heels, mount to down dog. Posterior tilt, round and roll. Leaning cobra. Leaning cobra to horizontal squat. Hover the knees as you rock back. Forehead kisses the mat. Base the knees. Externally rotate. Rock forward. Chaturanga. As far forward as you can go. Rock back. Rock forward. Rock back. Rock forward. Way forward. Rock back. Hover the knees. Horizontal squat. Leaning Cobra, as you extend the legs around and roll. Good. Adding a little something here for us. Slowly melt the hips. Upwards facing dog. Chin draws towards the chest. Big press. Protract. Round and roll using your core. Mount to down dog. Root the heels. Down dog. Good. Hover to the knees. Gaze forward. Slide the toes outside of the hands. So extend, lean your cobra, and then use your core. Slide it all in as far as you can go. Active squat. Active squat, tend the hands, finger, stand. Slow, mindful, swiveling through the legs. All right, to align the feet hip width distance. A single spinal undulation. Just standing, interlace the hands, the back of, the, excuse me, the lower spine. R externally rotate, drive the fist down towards the mat without hyperextending. Hinge at the hips, finding your interlaced forward fold, driving the fist upwards and over. Lovely, bend to the knees, hands drape and base. Rock forward, find your nook, bent arm crane. All right, taking a few moments to find your stability. It's just a matter of spending time here. All right, allowing the body to build itself to support what you are requiring from it. All right, smooth, steady breath. All right, whatever variation this looks like for you. Rocking back, toes kiss the mat as you rock back. A little shuffle here to reestablish ourselves in the center of the mat. Lean, right, your lalasana press. Bend through the arms, chaturanga. Extend the legs one at a time to find your true chaturanga. I'm gonna challenge you guys, press up, three quarter. Hover the chest. Good, press up halfway. Press up three quarter. Good. Leaning cobra. Leaning cobra. Traject the head forwards. Find your lean as much as you have. Bend through the arms. Smooth. Slow descent. Pause. True chaturanga. And on to the belly. Beautiful work. Beautiful. Finding our cobra roll to up dog. Up dog to down dog. Okay, right side, that sequencing that we learned. Let's move through it. So, smear your demi point as you extend the right leg. Elevate through the heel. Fold. Drive your ankle forward, knee through the midline. As soon as you find that knee towards the chest connection, begin rounding and rolling and step. Swivel onto the blade edge, right? Find your nook, whatever variation, whether it's supported with four bases, three bases, or two bases. Find your stability here. Notice what swivel and play where you feel strongest and work within that position. Now, disconnect the knee and float and step on the outside of the mat. Hands switch. Tenting the left hands, squaring up the hips, swiveling and stacking the shoulders, a revolved, extended side angle. Bend and hover the back knee, 
as you're posturing up, right, revolve lunge, back hand circles down to swivel, right, a little water wheel transition, warrior two, as soon as we arrive, swiveling on the feet, horse stance, double block, double block, deep reaching warrior, find as much reach forward as you can before the right hand bases. Begin circling the left, stacking through the shoulders, tricep knee connection, finding length through your side body, square up the hips. Right hand bases, root through the blade edge, press out of the right arm and shoulder girdle, hover the right foot, bend in the arm, use your support if you need to, finding your supported air baby, here we are. Taking a few sweet breaths, building into this isometric strength. In this pretty weird position. Remember the most important part is to maintain the bend in that support arm. Beautiful, left hand bases as you screw up the hips. Big toes connect, leaning co cobra, check the head forward. Externally rotate as you bend the arms. Hovering, true chaturanga. Press up, three quarter. Lower into a quarter chaturanga. Press up, halfway. Press, leaning cobra. Head rides forward. Bend through the arms, smooth, slow descent. Onto the belly. You know where to go, finding ourselves in down dog. Beautiful. Here we go. Ankles drive forward. Spinal wave, leaning cobra. Leaning cobra, horizontal squat, hover the knees. Press up through the arms. A little challenge for you, you if you're ready. Knees remain floated, lower onto the forearms. And extend the legs into a dolphin. Right, if this feels, this transition is unavailable to you, just regress to what you have learnt, which is the kneeling rocking dolphin. We're transitioning now through our rocking dolphin without the knees being based, okay? So drive the ankles forward. Maintain that 90 degree architecture. Ooh, there we are. Rock forward, chaturanga. Now you may need to lower the knees to rock back. But if you feel like you have the strength, uh, knees are gonna remain floating for that transition. So find yourself in dolphin. Mount your dolphin. 90 degree angle remains in the arms as you rock forward into your chaturanga. And if you can, rock back into your dolphin. Super challenging work here. Last cycle, whatever variation works in your body. Mount and rock. Dolphin. Beautiful work. Last one. I know I said that was the last one. This is the last one. Mount, rock on your belly. Beautiful work. Rock back. Float the knees, horizontal squat. Horizontal squat, extend the legs, lean in cobra. Right, find that strong kickoff. Right, working this straight on strength in more of a dynamic way. Melt the hips. Gaze forward, up dog. And arriving or meeting in our down dog. Immediately transitioning into our warrior stance sequencing. So, left toes extend up and back in the demi point. Heel to sit bone, mount your three leg down dog, knee through the midline, round roll. Find your connection as you swivel the foot, float into your supported air baby. We're here for about three breaths. Right, play with how much bend you have in the arm how much swivel you have. 
Remember, this is your variation. I've given you accessible variations no matter what level your practice is at. Disconnect the knee and elbow. Press out. Hip flexor strength. Step on the outside of the mat. Beautiful. The switch of the base hands to circle the left forward. Stack through the shoulders. I like to come up on the tents of the hands. Give me a bit more height to spiral through the spine. Stack through the shoulders. Yes. All right, so extend the side angle. Side angle. Really twist through the lower spine. Hover the back knee. Find your balance. Swivel as you rise up into your revolved lunge. Staying low. Crescent lunge variation. Black back heel roots. Heel toe to find your alignment. Warrior two. Here we go. Double block. Deep reaching warrior. Extended side angle. Taking your sweet time. No rush here. Supported air baby. Rock onto the blade edge. Find your nook. Maybe even shorten the distance. That may help you to find this little support of air baby. All right, if your elbow's feeling a little bit fragile right now, that's okay. Right, we're developing the toughness on that part of the arm. All right, last breath. Both hands base. Big toes connect. Leaning cobra. Slow descent. Now true chaturanga. Three quarter. Quarter chaturanga. True chaturanga. Leaning cobra. Good. Now as much as you can lean. Slow, smooth descent onto our belly. And rinse it out. Cobra roll up dog. Up dog to down dog. Lowering the knees. Finding Caesar for a moment. Beautiful work. We're not through the woods yet. I have a little challenge for us. Because Burkhan is building us to be more transitional in nature. Uh, we'd like to begin bridging our awareness to how do we transition out of these arm balances that we're learning. And so the challenge for us is to learn a forward roll outside of our bent arm crane. So if you're new to this practice, you may want to have some pillows right in front of you. right? So when we find our bent arm crane here, you want some softness. You move from pillows, once you're comfortable with that, move to some thick blankets. And then when you're comfortable with that, of course, moving to basic mats. So what we're looking for is to, to develop our uh, uh, stability strength, isometric hold within our bent arm crane. And then when we fall, we're transitioning. All right, so the sense that at no point can you, does it actually seem like you're falling because you are preempting the transition to seamlessly flow out. I hope that made sense. <laughs> so I will demonstrate what this looks like, right? So bent arm crane, right? We're looking for a max hold here to slow mo this. You can even base the head, tuck the chin. And we have our little forward roll. Okay, so uh, in a bit more of a faster pace, I'm not going to base the head. Rather, I'm just going to gaze right at the belly button. Now, that challenges the balance to do that. So make the commitment of when you gaze at the belly button, you're forward rolling. And just keeping this curvature tight. That's all you got to do. Gaze, keep it tight. Nothing changed, right? Uh, besides the mic got me dug into my back. That's about it. <clears throat> so you, all you have to do for this transition is trust. Trust that the curvature in the spine is what catches your momentum. 
So let's find our bent on crane. Max hold time. Of course, pause this video. I will go for a roughly 30 second bent arm crane. But for you at home, find your max hold and forward roll. Uh, if we're with it together, let's go for about 50 seconds. Excuse me, 30 seconds. All right, so fingers are spread. Spider grips, this recruits more forearm strength. Externally rotate the arms. Lean, find the nook. Continue to lean, bend through the arms. Right, so you know, three-quarter architecture, or three-quarter chaturanga. Jaw, the heels in towards the sit bone. Whoop. Perhaps protract and press out the scapula a bit more. It'll be, you'll find a bit more lightness on the back of the, the elbow. All right, so spider grips are active. You're pressing into the sevens, right, the thumb and index side of the wrist. And now, find your meditation. Remember, your one foot can be based. Both feet can be based. Right, for those of us who are flying, embrace the quivering. Right, this is developing your nervous system, and your neuroskeletal intelligence. Now you have to about 30 seconds. So now, set yourself up as you need to. Gaze towards your navel and lean over the fingertips. Voila. Not too bad, right? Now, because we were in that deflection of the wrist for a moment, right? whatever little wrist rehab you need in this moment, right? shake it off. It's important to uh, just find balance. Now, of course, you can pause the video to rehab the wrist for a, a little or to the point where you feel like you're ready for another max hold. But we'll move uh, right into a second hold. Of course, listen to your body. Know how the body speaks through sensation and really be honest with that process. Alrighty, so setting up your bent arm crane. Spider grips, wrap, lean, heel to sit bone, press and protract. Perhaps relax the neck. Check in with your body. Are you overstressing any part of the system? And how is it that you can relax into the space? Remember never to force your limits is your limits. You don't need to stay with me. All right, it's important to remain humble and do not force something you're not ready for. All right, when you find your max hold, chin to chest. And roll out. And voila. All right, beautiful work. Let's move into our cool down. Grab some cork blocks. <clears throat> We're moving through uh, an active puppy. So face the blocks long ways down the mat and tent the hands. So the entire hand is, is on the mat. Wiggle the knees back roughly to line under the hips. Press into the fingertips. Externally rotate through the arms, and with that activation, melt the chest towards the mat. All right, I always encourage a little exploration. All right, little swivels, little squirms to deepen right, into what we call containers of movement. Right, the hard work is done now. So it's really time to 
tune in and drop in so even though we're active through the shoulders there is a still remains a sense of stillness and surrender begin cinching the core gaze towards the navel so really engage the front line so you're super active and with that active core melt the shoulder girdle all right this may feel a little weird release the core so you melt let's move through a few cycles all right, of it's like a double active <laughs> where not only the shoulder active shoulder girdle is active but the core is also active so cinch in the core and then with that cinch melts into the shoulder girdle and then release All right, last one here cinch in through the core it's like creating a cat architecture kind of and then with that cinch a little lower into the shoulder girdle without releasing the external rotation now release into the forehead wiggle the hands off the blocks <laughs> base the left hand thread through the right All right, so we've thread through the, the right hand through the left needle with the right foot cup over the left Achilles right, it's just like a little grip rather than having the feet randomly sitting here I like to actually find this little bind it feels good in my body choose your own adventure and then rather than threading through think about connecting the elbow and knee and using that leverage here to create more thoracic opening well it's going to be opening through the entire spine but is a, often a deep thoracic opening the left hands so the overhead hands tent them and spider crawl them to the midline of the mat Right, this is going to help facilitate a much deeper spinal opening. And release the spider crawl. Transitioning through your tabletop. Switch the crossover in the feet, so switch the bind. All right, first thread through, base the shoulder, connect elbow and knee, and use that as a little torque to create this, the start of the spinal rotation. And then spider crawl, right hands towards the midline of the mat. <sighs> Seeing the spinal twist, we're establishing a four point base. <clears throat> nice, easy lower onto prone. I'm going to call this the prone crossover. So, thread the right hand uh, behind the left and wiggle the arms away from the midline. Now, we're looking for primarily is a stretch in the outer shoulder of the right side <clears throat> okay so if you shift onto your right side body is less sensation if you swivel onto the left side body notice you find more sensation so ride that edge with how much you rock in between the arms and allow yourself to curl around into the space now rather than just completely falling here right, i encourage you to activate and release activate and release 
playing with perhaps internal and external rotation from the arms. All right, so there's this subtle, curious nature to this type of cooling down. Remaining present with your attention, so don't let it run off into what's coming next. Remain in your practice. All right, shuffling out of this, crossing over. And a few breaths here to explore and settle in. Shuffling your way out of this. <clears throat> Lowering into prone. Right. Cactus the arms, so 90 degree architecture. Call this a wrestler's stretch. Now, uh, it could be a, a half scorpion with cactus architecture in the arms. So cactus the right hand, drive the shoulder out of the girdle. All right, so really create space in the shoulder girdle and then lightly press the hand into the mat so you're active in your soft tissue. Left heel towards the sit bone. Press and the left hand begins spiraling to the shoulder. Notice you're active here. Drive the shoulder or the elbow, excuse me, the elbow out of the shoulder to create a bit more space. Perhaps spider crawl the hands uh, a little bit open Right, finding the sweet spot in the shoulder girdle. Right, left toes can float and find full extension, right, reaching away. And the left fingertips can crawl in, its op in the opposite direction of the left leg, finding this beautiful opening in the body. Switching your architecture, creating space out of that shoulder girdle, right heel to sit bone, taking your long back step. Now notice if you're just jamming the shoulder, but actually press the palm in. Right toes hover and extend away from you. The head can base. Notice if you're talking too much on anything, creating too much rotation, where it's actually uh, putting your joints in positions that aren't necessarily helping. All right, you joint just enough where the nervous system can actually relax into this. And right hand spider crawls at a 45 degree angle and the right foot can equally reach in the opposite direction. releasing into prone we'll transition onto our back so circle the right arm forward so you can swivel to right side body scissor step the feet and adjust yourself onto your mat onto supine All right, final little activation here a little bridge in the hips interlace the hands roll onto the shoulder heads and bridge through the hips and opening through the shoulders. And 
here for release once you're back. And if any final pose that you need for your practice, please go ahead. Uh, otherwise, finding your Shavasana. Uh, this is a true opportunity for you to let go of something. What are you dying to today? Uh, we need to empty our cup in order to expand, in order to stay fresh. And this is facilitated by deep, long exhales as you surrender to gravity. Uh, allow yourself to melt into the earth. Uh, surrender everything. Please remain here as long as you need. Uh, you have put in the effort. And uh, now it's time for you to restore and relax your nervous system. Uh, thank you for joining me for this practice. I hope it served you in your growth and development. Namaste. Enos.